This podcast is brought to you by LMU Munich. So, as the culmination of the final session in the Delta Room on this uh, PyCon DE, we have a talk by João Santos on Conexion um, API first framework for Python. Please give this man a warm welcome. Okay, just a bit of context. I work for Zalando. Uh, we have 1,000 employees, 10,000 employees in general. We have a couple, uh, more than 1,000 people in technology, seven tech apps. We have business in 15 countries. We have more than 16 million uh, app downloads, um, both on Android and iOS, and we have more than eight, 18 million customers. This slide was from second quarter this year. Now we probably have more than this, but I was too lazy to update the slide. Uh, so first, what I'm going to present to you today is a framework that I created to do API first um, for Python. It's built on um, top, and um, so in a brief history of this is that I started um, this framework on April 2015 because I wanted to um, I wanted to build a microservice um, to do AWS deployments. And um, Zalando had, had adopted a philosophy of API-first development uh, based on, back at the time, it was still called Swagger, now it's called OpenAPI. This meant that I, would, uh, I did the API for, uh, definition first with YAML. If you know, uh, just one question, how many of you do know about Swagger and OpenAPI? Okay, a few. The others should look at it because it's really cool. So the idea is that you create a YAML file the docu documenting your API and you can even give some examples and what you expect to receive and what you will return. So um, people doing clients for your service can, can know how to count on. So, and we wanted to do it API first because we, because when you do the API, when you do the implementation first and uh, do the documentation later, your API always reflects the implementation, and if you change the implementation, then you probably will have to change the API, and people doing your clients for your API will probably hate you. And uh, this way, we could do something that, um, that was good to use from the client side, that was implementation independent, and so we wanted to do this. But um, when I lo went looking for tooling to do this, I didn't find anything. There were lots of tools for Django, for Flask, for whatever that were able to generate Swagger definitions based on the code, but not the other way around. So if I tried to use them, I would have, um, in the end, I would have my definition that I done by end before, and I would lo lose lots of time trying to make the implementation return something similar, which was not ideal. So I decided to start my own on top of Flask. Uh, so the advantages of API first, as I said, is that it's decoupled from implementation. It would allowed me to do something more robust and more consistent. Okay, um, uh, so, and what did I get by making a framework that um, allows, um, that used open API and um, API first? I got automatic routing, so um, open API uh, YAML uh, um, documents all the routes that you have on your application and for, and for all the methods and uh, I had this, all this information here and I, did, and I didn't want to put everything again on my code. Uh, it documents what, uh, what we expect and what you will return so I, um, I can do a request and response validation automatically, automatic serialization because I know what, which endpoints return what uh, I know what I expect to receive, so I can do type typecasting. Uh, it has some, um, uh, you can document security, and we are using GoOut to at Zalando, so uh, connection also supports OAuth to token bearer authentication out of the box. And um, we have the whole open a API ecosystem, and we have little to no boilerplate code, as I'm going to show later. So, um, as I said, we have routing based on the open API specification and out of the box, we have, well, two main uh, routing strategies and 
two more to tell them later, but the main tool that if you write normal code is explicit and implicit routing out of, um, so, and what does this mean? So explicit routing is when you explicitly say, uh, this is the function that will end handle my endpoint. So you have, uh, on OpenAPI, you have two paths on your application and paths have methods. And in this case, I'm saying for the endpoint, hello world, uh, with, if I call this with get method, this will be handled by the, um, the function hello world in my API.API module, and I can just return hello world, for example. And uh, th um, this will uh, work automatically. I don't have to put any annotations on my code. I don't, have, want, don't need to validate requests. I don't need to validate responses. I have to everything there. Uh, the automatic routing, what we, we call RESTI resolver, uh, tries to guess the name of the function or the method based on the um, endpoint. So in this case, um, I have to pass hello world again, uh, but I don't have the operation ID. It's implicit. That's API dot hello world dot get. Hello world is the endpoint. Get this method, and it will. Uh, and I just have to initi initialize the API with uh, a, um, with the name of YAML file and say to use the automatic. Rest, rest resolver with the API model. So response validation, we use a JSON schema. Um, so because that's also how OpenAPI defines what it expects. Um, if the, if the, you receive a wrong request, a uh, you, um, you, uh, connection will automatically get, um, return a for render for you. Yeah, so you know that uh, to request, um, parameters you get on your functions are correct and with the right types and you don't have to care about this yourself. Uh, we also have optional uh, response validation. It's um, off by default and we only recommend you to use this on when you are debugging because it has overhead like everything else on the, uh, like everything else and uh, it's better, usually it's better to return something even if it's not 100% uh, correct and let clients handle it but for debugging and during development, it uh, prevents you from doing mistakes. So typecasting, in this case we type, um, you can be uh, sure that, well more or less sure that, uh, at least if you are using the supported types, because you don't support every kind of arrays, but um, if, you, if you say that you want to receive an integer as a query parameter, you will get an integer. It's not like Flask where you will get a string and then you have to cast it to an int. So, or same thing for form, uh, form data or body parameters, everything will, so you can say I expect a number on OpenAPI and you'll get a float on Python. If you expect an integer, you will get an integer. If you, if you have an array on o OpenAPI, you will get a list on Python if it's one of the supported formats. Um, then on, um, um, if you say that the, your endpoint returns JSON, and when I say JSON, it can be uh, application slash JSON or application something plus JSON, um, connection will try to handle serialization for you. Uh, if you are returning a dict that can be serialized by the normal uh, encoder, you can just use that and don't not worry about it. But if you want to return some weird object, that you have in your application and you want this to be handled without um, having to do to serialize it yourself in every place you can uh, use custom encoders like you you would use on flask it's the exact same way because there's flask on bottom of it and it will just work uh, and last but not least we support uh, OAuth to um, token bearer authentication uh, and authorization out of the box um, so you can you can say where you ex uh, where you can get tokens, um, where um, you um, are going to validate the tokens against. So the token info URL, and you can say for each endpoint what scopes are needed to do uh, each action, and everything will be handled for you. You don't have to. So if you are using just this or to better uh, authentication, token authentication, everything will work for you. You, you don't have to worry. Uh, so one of the advantages of using OpenAPI is that you can use um, 
the of all uh, open API ecosystem. Uh, one of the cool things um, is, and it's included out of the box with connection and you can and it's enabled by default but you can disable it is um, Swagger UI so this reads the same YAML file that connection reads and generates a nice uh, a nice web page where you can um, see the documentation of your API and you can even make some requests on it and uh, so you can play around with API and people using your API can play around with it and understand it better. Uh, we have the Swagger editor, so it, um, it's some kind of IDE for Swagger uh, and it will, sh it will also provide documentation on fly as you are writing it and it's not most user friendly tool but uh, after you get, uh, after you get um, initial learning phase it's very useful and if you have an, an error on your Swagger definition it will cache it early otherwise uh, connection will also cache it, for you, uh, cache it for you and it will show you what the error is but if you do it uh, if you do your API with Swagger editor you will catch errors first. Another thing that um, uh, Swagger project um, uh, gives um, gives you is the Swagger code gen that generates codes for uh, generates code for clients and servers. It supports connection out, out of the box, so you can just say use this ugly Java command and uh, provide your uh, and <coughs> and provide your API document the definition and it will generate some code. It's not it will not be the most beautiful code ever, but it will work. And you can see more open source integrations on Swagger.io. There are lots of them for different languages, uh, for client side, server side, and other tools, IDEs, or whatever. And we can, you can get connection. It's fully open source, uh, and you can get it from our, uh, from GitHub on Zalando connection. You can also contribute. We have lots of external contributors, and um, you c you can create issues, and we will try to help you. And, and you can install it with PIP, of course. It's PIP install connection and it should just work. And we, ha we have documentation on connection with docs.org. Uh, if something is not, uh, if, if you think there's something missing there, please create some issue and we will take care of it and make it better because we want to have good documentation. And now I'm going to try to do a live demo with some of the new features we have. So, uh, if you, where's my mouse? Okay, so here, so before this would be what I would do for a demo. Uh, so this is the boilerplate on a basic um, uh, connection application, but now we have something even better. You can, we can do stuff without any boilerplate at all. I just have to remember. Uh, okay. Please tell me if it's not big enough. So, I have I have already some files here. Uh, so imagine I started doing my API and I still don't have anything done yet. So uh, this is the example one from uh, from the Open Open API project. So I have all the endpoints here and uh, what the application consumes and returns. Uh, so I see, I say what I expect, what I don't, uh, and what I return, and I even have some examples of what I'm going to return. Uh, where, so I have, you can document examples of what uh, the client should expect. So, and so I can just do connection run. Because I don't have anything implemented there yet, I'm, um, I'm going to use tab, I'm going to use uh, strict validation because I want to validate request and I want to validate responses and I'm going to use the first API 
Uh, I forgot something. I want minus v, so minus v and minus z, so you know what's going to happen here. So see lots of logs, and it's adding um, uh, the thing, everything here. So you see it's running on part five thousand. So and. So you have the API here, it's Pets API, and if I try to do a get here, I'll, I'll get a 501 saying that I still didn't implement this, and I'm going back to this later. But I can, I can do even better, I can do, because I, because I still don't have my implementation, but there, there are probably people already trying to do a, make a client for this, and uh, they want some something to test against. I can. Oh, uh, yeah, there's something wrong on the example. Uh, fine. So I'm going to disable the response validation. As you can see, it works. One thing I less okay. As you can see here, it um, returns something based on the examples I have on documentation. Right now, it, it, it's still not able to do, to generate examples for you because um, it's hard to do something meaning, meaningful without knowing what kind of data we expect. So, if there is no example here, but it is required. So if it's not implemented, um, if there's no examples, it will just say no example response was defined. So, but now imagine I have an implementation already and I'm going to do this with it. So, so you have an idea of what implementation would look like just for the first endpoint. Uh, so you have this is just it, you can just return something like this. It's, it's not a valid response, it's something just quick that I did. But you can just receive a limit and an animal type and it doesn't matter where it, where it comes from, it will be handled. And uh, this will just, should just work. So I'm going to use, So the API one already has the operation ID for this thing. So I'm just going to remove mock and okay. So it just returned what I what I was expecting, uh, what I returned. I'm not validating the response, otherwise it will be it will tell, tell me that I'm returning the wrong thing. Imagine uh, uh, I, instead of an integer, I try to give it a letter. I'll get a, for, a 400 saying I'm doing a bad request and my application will not, will not need to handle this. So everything will be handled for you. So you can, so you can start doing your implementation without having everything ready and do it by steps, which is cool. Um, so this is some information about Zalando. We have a jobs page like every tech company we are hiring. Um, we have lots of open source projects at github.com uh, slash Zalando. And we have a Twitter account and uh, we do lots of meetups if you are in Berlin. Any questions? Uh, how do you handle versioning? Oh, do you handle versioning? Uh, so we have we have a continuous delivery pipeline that just uh, increments the number. We, are, we just change the major ver version manually if we do large changes that can break code. We only did it once until now. Every, um, for the minor version, we just increment it automatically and uh, that's it. Um, so, if we can support uh, ROP other um, uh, web frameworks, uh, right, uh, besides Flask and Tornado. So, to right now, if it's something else that Flask supports, then we also support it. 
Um, there are, are some people, including, including Rafael, that's one of our core contributors that's uh, here, and he was the one that implemented this uh, cool command line tool. Uh, he wants to try to support some, um, uh, other frameworks like Django, but right now we still don't uh, support it out of the box. So, any other question? Uh, if it does generate tests, uh, no, it doesn't generate tests. But because they are normal functions, you, it's way easier than to write tests for most frameworks because you can, you can just provide parameters directly. You don't have to mock at um, re a request object or anything. You can just provide parameters you expect, and uh, you can test it like a normal function. Um, so, uh, so if we support uh, both ways because it's in YAML file, so it's in YAML file, uh, but it's representing the same thing as JSON schema. So it's an, a super. Um, so Open Open API um, by default supports um, YAML files. So JSON is a subset of it, and. Um, you can just you you just uh, define your uh, types you expect to receive as you would in some schema, but you can use YAML for it. Thank you. Any other question? Did you take into account hypermedia for the for your implementation? Uh, hypermedia. Hyper uh, if I took into account hypermedia. Uh, Yes. Yes. So uh, if we support hypermedia, and uh, the answer is well, you can do it on top of Swagger and Open API. We we decided to go for Open API because it had a better, a better ecosystem, and I uh, and you can do uh, uh, hypermedia on top of Open API and Swagger. We don't do it, and we don't recommend it because then you are replicating work, and it's. Uh, it's hard to make your API, but if you want to do it, you can. So it appears we do not have any more questions. So thank you very much, Zhao, for your talk. Thank you.